Firefox 83 was just released the other day with some new interesting features. The biggest changes are the improvements to SpiderMonkey, the Firefox JavaScript engine, which is claimed to have improved the performance of page loading by up to 15%, page responsiveness by up to 12%, and all while reducing the memory footprint by up to 8%. And there's also a new HTTPS only mode, which as the name implies, will make sure that all of the connections Firefox makes to the web are encrypted with HTTPS. And it'll also alert you with a secure connection is not available. And this is really great considering that previously I would implement this functionality in Firefox either by toggling it in about config or with the add-on HTTPS everywhere. But now that this is a feature that's located in the settings, if it works as it claims to work, then there's one less, that's one less add-on, which is going to be necessary to harden the browser. So you can enable this, uh, like I said, by going into the preferences and then it's under the privacy and security tab. If you scroll all the way down, you'll see the HTTPS only mode. So you can toggle it to be on in all windows. Uh, you can have it to not be enabled. That's gonna be the default setting, or you can have it so that it is only enabled in private windows. And when it is turned on, when you go to a site that doesn't have HTTPS, a HTTP only site, um, when we try to click on it, then we're going to get a page like this that tells you secure connection is not available. So it's basically just warning you. It's not that it actually prevents you from going to the site. It just gives you a heads up like, hey, this is only using HTTP. Uh, you know, anything that you communicate to the site isn't going to be encrypted. And then you just press this button to continue to the HTTP site. And there you go. There's some other new features for mobile and touchscreen capable devices. Uh, essentially, it's pinch zooming now being available when you have a touchscreen, and it's also pinch zooming is available on the touchpad for MacBooks. There's also been an upgrade to picture in picture mode. So it now has the ability uh, when you go to picture in picture mode, and if you didn't know about this, it basically just lets you to uh, drag a video out like this, and then you can also have it on other tabs if you want to have a video going and be browsing another site at the same time. But basically, this picture in picture mode, um, uh, the it now has the ability to do volume down and volume up. So with the down key, that'll put the volume down. It's, it's not volume up will put the volume the up. And you can also fast forward the video with the right arrow key and then rewind the video with the left arrow key. Uh, there isn't any mute option available, at least none that I could find, like the M key, which typically does that on YouTube and other streaming sites, doesn't mute the video. Uh, there's also not an option to step through the video frame by frame with the comma or the period keys, although Usually I don't use this feature on YouTube anyway because of the buffering. If I want to step through a video frame by frame, then I'll usually download the video uh, or stream it with MPV and then do it that way. And there's also been some updates to the search panel. So when you go to select a search engine at the bottom, you're going to enter a search mode uh, for that search engine, which is going to show you search suggestions for, um, you know, any type of search term. So if we look up like, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe like AMD video cards. Well, it's not really doing it with DuckDuckGo, but I usually turn search suggestions off anyway. Uh, it's a good privacy feature to implement. So I think most of the people that are probably watching this video who uh, have been on the channel for a while, you probably don't really use search suggestions anyway. There's also a smooth scrolling that has been added. Um, now, some people have been complaining about this smooth scrolling, uh, saying that it's not actually very smooth, like that it's kind of choppy or whatever. Um, I haven't really noticed this. Granted, I'm on Linux. 
Uh, so maybe it's like a Windows thing or a Mac thing or whatever. Uh, if you are having problems though with the um, smooth scrolling, you can disable it in about config. So this is the value right here. And of course, by default, it's true. You can press this over here to change it to false and uh, restart your browser and see if that improves it for you. And finally, there's a number of security fixes that were done. Several of them were high impact uh, and then many more were moderate ones. So I would advise you to update your browser especially if you're running Firefox on a less secure operating system like Windows. That way you can try to prevent any potential breaches of your system. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there was an upgrade to the JavaScript engine, which is going to cause most websites to load faster and your overall browsing experience to be faster since um, you know, so much of the internet these days is built with JavaScript included. A lot of websites are very JavaScript heavy. And I have some benchmarks to compare this speed of Firefox 83 uh, with some other browsers. First, we're going to take a look at Firefox 82, which is what I was previously running as my daily driver. So you can see that this is my score on Jetstream. When I was running Firefox 82, it's got a 79 or 71.9 rather. Uh, then there's the motion mark benchmark that has an 80.01. And then there's the speedometer 2.0 benchmark. This has a 61.3. All three of these benchmarks are available at browserbench.org, by the way. And just as a comparison, I also went ahead and tested Chromium. So these are the results for Chromium. Jetstream got a 98.75. In MotionMark, it got a 267.27. And then on the speedometer, it got a 79.23. So now I'm going to test the latest and greatest Firefox 83 to see if there's any significant difference. I'm gonna go ahead and close these other tabs just so that it's set up the same way that I had the other browsers. And let's begin.
So Firefox 83 is faster in speedometer than Firefox 82, but slower than Chrome. And everything else though, Firefox 83 was actually slower. It got a 53 in motion mark, much lower than the 80 that Firefox 82 got, and even you know significantly lower than the 267 that Chromium got. Now, granted, motion mark is a graphics benchmark, and I am using NVIDIA graphics. So if I had to guess why the score was so low, it's probably related to that. We know that NVIDIA and Linux don't play nice together, so there might be some more work that has to be done to get this new version of Firefox to play nicer with it. Uh, but with Jetstream, we continue to see this poorer performance. Firefox 83 got a 57, Firefox 82 got a 71, and Chromium got a 98. So I'm not really sure what's going on here, if it's just a Linux thing, or if the default settings in Firefox 83 are bogging it down a bit more because I haven't actually gone through and hardened this updated browser yet. It's uh, still kind of strange though, considering that the better speed was the main point of the update. It's the first thing that Mozilla listed in the uh, release. So I would be interested to hear from you guys, especially those of you that are using Linux, if you do end up getting better speeds with Firefox 83. I've read online from Windows users that they are getting better performance pretty much across the board with this newer version of Firefox. But yeah, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed.